Hey guys, welcome to my 40 books I want to read before I turn 40 video. I've seen this come up a number of times on booktube where people will make a list of books they want to read before you know their next milestone birthday. Anne from In Search of Wonder just did this for 50 books she wants to read before 50. Morgan from Morgan's Endless Bookshelf just did this for 30 books she wants to read before 30. Now both of those ladies did have created this book list with like five years before they hit their milestone birthday. I have a year and a half before I turn 40, so I've kept this in mind while creating my book list. Part of me wanted to make it like 40 classics, and then part of me was like, there's no way I'm gonna read 40 classics in a year and a half, so I'm going to go through the list in the order that I made it, and you'll notice it's like classic, classic, me freaking out that I won't read enough classics, so I add some modern books, and then me wanting to put some more classics in, and then freaking out and putting in more modern books. So it kind of alternates, and I could have organized this differently, but I thought it might be fun just to see my thought process a little bit as I went through this. So I have uh, physical books for a lot of them but there's a few of them that I don't own. So I've got my handy dandy list with all 40 books on it. And the first book I don't own, that is The Enchanted April. This is a book I wanted to read this last April, but I didn't get around to it, so it's going for next April. And honestly, this is a classic that I don't really know anything about, but I've heard really good things, so therefore I want to read it but I feel like it has to be read in April. So that's what I'm gonna be reading in April. Something that I started this last year and have decided this is going to forever be a thing. I know that there is Dickens December here on booktube, but December is a really busy month and Dickens books are really long. So I've decided, and what I did this last year is every January, I'm going to start the next book in the Dickens publication order that I own and just read until I'm done. So this year, starting in January, or I guess in 2025, starting in January, I am going to be reading Nicholas Nickleby uh, by Dickens, and I have this in an edition with the like very uh, retro illustrations that uh, I had these same illustrations in the Pickwick papers this last year, and I believe these are like from the first edition as well, these illustrations. So that's a big book. That's what I'm gonna be reading in January. It's two Januaries before I turn 40. So the next one I will be reading the next January is The Old Curiosity Shop. I honestly don't know anything about either of these books. I will look them up before I read them because Dickens writes a lot of words and I need to know what I'm getting into but if I look them up too much right now, I'll just forget. I may be starting to do a little bit of a read-along type thing with my classics starting soon. Uh, stay tuned. I don't have like an exact date when I plan on figuring this out, but in the next, I would say like two months, I would like to have that figured out. So stay tuned to my videos and I will share if or what I will be doing for that. Okay, and then after two Dickens books on the list, I was like, I need some shorter, more modern books. So the one, these ones I don't own physical copies of. I might buy the physical copies or I might just read the eBooks. They are books three, four, and five in the Secrets of Ormdale series. I believe it's ending on the fifth book. I think that's all. So it started out with Wormwood Abbey, and then it was Drake Hall, I've read those two and then I want to read the next three. I'm really trying to do a better job at like actually completing the series that I start and these ones are all, I think they do get a little bit thicker, but the first couple were only like 200 pages so it's not a huge commitment and then after, you know, putting some Dickens on the list I needed something shorter and then after three short books I was like, okay, I need some more classics. I want to read Mistress Pat by L.M. Montgomery. This is the second book after Pat of Silver Bush. I did not love that book, but I want to finish a series. It's just a duology. I can do this. So this one, we start with Pat when she is 20. So I think she's aged quite a bit since the end of um, Pat of Silver Bush, but I don't remember how old she was when we ended. But it's Ella Montgomery, so it's 
good. There is one character that has a very thick accent that is quite hard to read and decipher what she's saying, but I still want to finish it. Plus, oddly, Tundra books, they put this book in this edition, but they never put the first book in. I can understand them putting the first book in it, an edition and then like not continuing, but to do the second book is so very strange. Continuing with some Montgomery, I also want to read Chronicles of Avonlea. These are enchanting so stories set in the world of Green Gables where love and laughter never end and the heart never forgets. I grew up watching Road to Avonlea, which is loosely based off of the story girl, and I'm not sure if this will follow some of those same characters, but I love the Avonlea setting, so I want to read that. And then I decided to go on a Sanderson sprint here. So I need to finish the Wax and Wayne series. I've read the first book. I don't remember what the second one is called. I don't own it. And then I have the third one. Maybe this is the second. Bands of Mourning. I have this one. And then I also have The Lost Metal, which is book four. So I need to read books two, three, and four in this series. So this is uh, with like a, where people have powers based on metals they ingest and stuff. Uh, it's really good. I really enjoyed the first set of series and can't wait to like actually finish this one. And then speaking of Sanderson, um, I still haven't read The Sunlit Man. I own that one on ebook, but I haven't read it. I don't know why. I don't really have an excuse. I wanted to read the Wax and Wayne series first just because I'd already started that. And then also I want to read Wind and Truth, which is a going to be a chunky book. It's coming out next month. It's book five in the Stormlight Archive. And those books are like 12 or 1400 pages. So a lot of pages there. After a bunch of Sanderson on the list, I was like, I need another classic. And I pulled out Villette by Charlotte Bronte. So I read The Professor this spring, kind of hated it. Um, and I think Villette is Re her reworking of the professor. The professor was published first with a male main character and I think this is like the same story expanded reworked with a female main character which I'm very curious about because the professor was so very boring and I think it'll be interesting to see how she took the same story and changed it. Uh, yeah so Charlotte is not my favorite of the Brontes but I do enjoy her writing style other than The Professor of That Guys, that one was so bad. It was it was so painful to get through. Then for a modern series, I want to read the Six of Crows books. There's two of them. Uh, so I own the first one, Six Dangerous Outcasts, One Impossible Heist. I actually don't know anything, but I read the Shadow and Bone trilogy kind of in preparation. So I want to finish this since I've started this world. So I'm going to read Six of Crows and then book two is The Crooked Kingdom, I think. And then another series where I don't, this one I don't own book one. Book one is Renegades, then we've got Arch Enemies and Supernova. This is a science fiction series by Marissa Meyer. She wrote the Cinder series. I've heard really great things about this series and I want to read it. It's just at this point I own books two and three so I'm kind of just waiting for book one to fall in my lap. I could get it from the library and I might, but because I already own these two, I kind of just want to read by book one and then read all the books that I own. I have this weird thing where if I like a book, I, I want to own a copy, but I don't really want to buy one after. I want to like read the copy that I own. I don't know. That all being said, I'm trying not to buy more books. So it, it, it's a hard thing. The two sides of me are always fighting. And then I was like, let's do another classic. I've heard really great things about Christie by Catherine Marshall. I remember watching the movie, I think more than once growing up. Uh, Christie is like a teacher, right? She left home at 19 to teach school in the Smoky Mountains. Uh, and I remember enjoying the movie. I don't remember any details but maybe I should watch the movie before reading the book. Maybe should I watch the movie first or read the book first? Let me know. When is this set or written or... We just barely finished watching Anna Green Gables so I'm kind of in the mood for like some old-timey teacher stuff. Copyright 1967 but I don't know when it's actually set. I don't know. But that one's on my list. 
And then I've got a few books that will make things easier. I want to finish the Mrs. Polifax series before I turn 40. So as of right now, I need to read books 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. Sounds like a lot. Um, I don't know which ones these are, but I own Mrs. Polifax, Innocent Tourist, Mrs. Polifax, and the Lion Killer, and Mrs. Polifax and the Whirling Dervish. So obviously I don't own all the rest of them, but I can get them from the library or keep my eye out for them. I would definitely like to read or own all of these. A book that hasn't even come out yet that I want to read is Rune by Victoria McCombs. I loved her um, Mortal Queens, Lethal Kings, the Fae duology that she just finished up. And I have an arc for Rune and I just, I'm so ready. I think I'm gonna love it. Don't really even know what it's about, but that's okay. I just really trust her writing. So that one is on my list. I've also got Daughter of the Sun. I have a, the ebook version of this. I've heard really good things. I think this might, I don't know how long it's going to be. I think there's already two books out though. And then Heart of the Sea, another one I own via ebook that I want to read hoping to buy a Kobo really soon and be able to read some of the ebooks I own that way. Uh, another fantasy, and this one I own a physical copy of, is The Unraveling of Emlyn Dulane. So I just barely shared this in a book haul. Uh, it's by Lindsay Franklin. Very excited about this because I've enjoyed her writing. Even before I was into fantasy, I enjoyed her writing and I'm very curious to see what I think of it now that I am into fantasy. On to two more classics. I think vaguely this, the two next books can be any two books by this author, but I currently own these two. So it's Elizabeth Gaskell. I own Mary Barton and I own Ruth. I kind of really want to read Cranford because I hear that one talked about a lot, but I don't own it. If I were to own it, it might bump one of these off the list, but I do want to read more from her. She's a very easy Victorian author to read. She, her writing is just very easy to read. Then I've got four books in a series. We've got the Narnia series. I honestly do not know if I've ever read all of the books. I think I have, but I have not read these last four at least as often as the first three. So I want to read Prince Caspian, The Voyage of the Dawn Treader, The Silver Chair, and The Last Battle. I'm pretty sure I've read them before, but I don't remember enough. And so I'm going to read these since they are like middle grade fantasy books. These should be pretty quick and easy. And we're on to the last few here. I have an Anthony Trollope, The Belton Estate. Um, I love this little book. My four-year-old is obsessed with like books that are small and she's always trying to steal this one from me. The font is very tiny though. So I think Tr um, Trollope is another Victorian author. I've never read anything by him. I don't really know anything about this book, but Penny recommended it a long time ago. I found it at a used bookstore and so I've been meaning to read it ever since. Then I have Jane Austen at home. I had hoped to read this this last Jane Austen July. It didn't happen. So now I'm hoping to read it for next July. I think I will be better at following up on my goals next year. I hope so. And the last, but certainly not the least book that I want to read before I turn 40 is Agatha Christie, an autobiography. And this is very much what it says, is Agatha Christie's autobiography. I own this book in a couple different editions. I'm not sure which one I'm gonna read it from, but I am curious to read her life story in her own words. I love most of her writing. That's not true. Her romances, I read one. It was, I was kind of cringy. Actually, it wasn't cringy, it was boring. So I'm just curious to see how she has written her own life. And that is the 40 books I wanna read before I turn 40. I will read more than 40 books before I turn 40, but I don't like having an exact list of like, these are the next 40 books I'm gonna read. So hopefully I can pick through these throughout the next 18 months 
and have them all read before I turn 40. If you guys have ever done a book project like this, I would love to hear it. What kind of stack did you have? Was it mostly classics? Was it other things? What, what were you leaning towards? I would love to hear it. Uh, thanks for hanging out with me while I shared the stack of books.